Good morning. And again, <coughs> I don't see anybody online on the hour, but don't forget these will be recorded and you'll be able to pick them up later. This morning, after me, after email, um, I'm going to cover um, the unit of the qualification. As you know, this is only a two unit qualification. Uh, and the second unit is fairly straightforward. Um, I'm going to run this um, this lesson as far as it goes today because it may be able to cover it in just the one lesson, um, although there is one scheduled again for Friday. What I'll do is I'll at the end of this lesson, if I've covered everything and nobody else has come on, uh, I'll email you all later to make sure that um, you understand that and there'll be no further lesson on Friday. Okay, right, well, one of the things I want to cover first is that um, the part of um, Unit 1, uh, one of the documents that I wanted to put in on there was to give you um, a view of an internal verification strategy. I'll put one up here, which I put together, and then we'll carry on with the rest of that. Um, that we did last time. The written document, um, and it was in response uh, that I did several strategies depending on the circumstances of the organization that I was working with them. This was for um, let me say, I sent to Lancashire College, who had got into rather difficulties with the uh, verifier. And I was asked to go in um, to put it out. But what I did find, and they didn't have an internal verification strategy, um, and this was one of the reasons they'd been sanctioned by the uh, award body. And it stopped them from making any more registrations or claiming any more certification until they got sorted out. Um, Fortunately for the college, when the external verifier turned up, I actually knew him. Um, so we managed to get the sanctions lifted, provided I provided him with a strategy for moving forward. The strategy for managing and sampling assessed awards will be determined by size to ensure reliability, number of the experienced and workload of the assessor, the number of different sites being worked, whether they've got rolling starts and finish dates or fixed ones, and it will be by examination of the assessment reports and feedback, observations for experienced assessors two per year, for new assessors three in the first six months, two in the second six months, and three in the following 12 months. Now, those were for that particular organisation because none of the, um, the assessors were particularly experienced. There were a couple that have been doing it for a while, but um, whether I would have declared them as experienced is another matter. So I, I, cleared, I said I'm two year there. But with an experienced group of assessors, probably one a year will be sufficient for that. Uh, for new assessors, three in the first six months, two in the second six months, and then three in the following 12 months. So they've probably dropped that to two in different circumstances. These are quite heavy innovations, or quite a workload for the internal quality. Um, the portfolios, uh, there'll be at least one interim and one final uh, verific internal verification. Uh, one control unit, a core, sampled for all candidates to ensure standardization. Now this comes back to what we talked about before. Um, standardization is uh, an important, uh, a very important piece of the IQA's work. That is to make sure that the assessments across the qualification are fair. If you've got a number of assessors in a particular organization assessing similar qualifications, the same or similar qualifications, then not just the methods of assessment should be similar. 
I'm not saying it should be exact in every instance because circumstances at the assessment site may be different. But it's a look at the standard that's being applied. The awarding body will say uh, most of the time there will be guidelines for assessors, and those guidelines, some assessors may adhere to them stringently. Uh, others may say, oh, that doesn't matter, or this doesn't matter, and it's not, you're not getting the same reaction. This means that at some um, of these meetings, um, you need to have uh, a, a practice. You'll take a unit on the qualification that the probably two or three assessors are, are actually assessing and give them a student's work exactly the same piece of students work and that get them to assess it and from the result you'll know whether they are assessing at the same level standard yeah it's very easy for an assessor particularly on academic work to put their interpretation onto they may say i don't think that's good enough um, it isn't got this and it's not got that in. Another assessor may look at it slightly differently and say, well, yeah, he's covered that and he had referenced it and he's done this, and say, well, okay, that'll do. It's to try and tighten that up to make sure the fairness. In practical applications, um, the standard is much clearer. It will say, has to do this, this, and this, must apply that, that, and that. Uh, and it's very prescriptive, if you like, and it makes it certainly easier for the assessor because he's either done it or he hasn't. It's as simple as that. Some of you will be able to um, understand this in the situation in which you work, where people are actually going to do something, they are going to produce something. Um, at the end of the day, using equipment. So, yeah. The next bit is coming to the important. All records must be kept in a centre file. Yeah. In other words, the centre must have an IQA file and all the records and documentation that's completed for that must end, must end up in that file. It must be kept at least electronically, but certainly I would um, paper-based records as well um, for the general there isn't that many of them so yeah you can do that quite easily the centre file will be produced because again this is, they haven't got one so they, <laughs> they have to produce a centre file it contain a list of assessors and their qualifications experience and then a uh, TPD that they were involved in a list of registered candidates identifying the dates of registration. An overall sampling plan over a given period covering all registered candidates. An ongoing sampling plan for formative verification of portfolios. This is where a number of, we're, we're building paper-based portfolios. But the same applies on our, our um, VLA platform, our Moodle. Um, Work can be actually deposited on there for assessment and feedback and then returned and pick or picked up again. Now, some of that is not happening at the moment without us. Uh, I would like to, some of you to get your head around that and see that you can put your documentation onto there. It will notify me when there's documents there that need to be assessed and I can pick those up, deal with them, give you feedback and send them back very quickly. An ongoing sampling plan for summative verification of portfolio and submitted assignments. And again, this will be um, the plan in ours. It's, it's, it's available electronically to do that. Copies of interim internal verified reports to assessors with any actions and feedback. So all these were in the centre file. Copies of final internal verified reports with any feedback and actions. If it's a final internal verified report, it shouldn't have any actions um, because there will obviously something need to be signed off. It may be something very small, 
like the assessor needs to get some signatures on something. Um, again, documentation is it has to be auditable. So consequently, when people have done things, have completed things, they need to be signed and dated by both the candidate and the assessor. But they again, you've got a, 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 an auditable document. Any actions to be cleared and recorded before the external verify is busy. Now again, we, uh, <coughs> the terminology has changed. Of course, this will be EQA and IQA, not internal and external verifier. Doesn't mean any difference. It's exactly the same on both. In terms of IQA, it goes a little further than this, and I will explain later. All records of any claim certification to be kept on file. Now, again, this is done electronically and will automatically be kept onto our set of files. Right, now this was for specific things, and again, it can be done um, within the confines of a specific qualification. We will work towards a standard portfolio for these awards, determining what they will contain and what order they will appear. Now, I mentioned this at the last lesson. If you are building your own portfolio electronically, uh, then it makes sense to start with Unit 1. Well, you can start with your declaration form that this is your work, then Unit 1, Unit 2, 3, 4, and then numerical order up to this one, which is, 30, uh, which is um, 2 in, in this case, there's only 1 2. Uh, but where you've got um, yeah, some of you are on the uh, on the teacher learning qualification level five. That's got um, nine units. Um, therefore, again, you would have one, two, three, four, and then whatever unit you would have down to, I think the last one's 39 on that qualification. So you would have, not 39 units, obviously, but the unit 39 will be the last one in, in your electronic portfolio. Yeah. All new assessors to receive an adequate induction into our processes, followed by close support. There's a word in there, adequate. It's who deems it adequate. Well, in this case, it's you, the IQA. Yeah. If you think an assessor is now capable of working on their own, and you know the people, you're working with them on a daily basis, are they capable of working alone with some support, or do they still need to have further training? The induction process needs to cover everything, all the documentation, and everything that goes with it. All assessors will need to have copies of all the centre assessment materials. I put TBA on there because a lot of it was missing, and we have to put it in later. Copies of internal verification documents, we didn't have any. Uh, again, this was why they got into the problem, and we had to um, draft or use um, internal verification documents that I already have uh, for all organisations, and uh, just recopied those with their load one. Copies of the standards for each award be assessed. Now, that is very important. Um, one of the things that the, the candidate should have yeah, is a copy of the standards they're working towards. Yeah? So those are all available to you. And every part on the middle, it says this unit does this or unit does that. I have also, if you remember, <coughs> I'll come back to it shortly, um, put suggested evidence forms on that sheet which, where it says what is required. Uh, and that, well, to do that, you need to do this. So that sheet will bring up again shortly. And they must have access to training and support. <coughs> All portfolios are the hard copy or electrical presented for internal verification shall have secure storage, be logged in and out, and cleared within three weeks. Now that's for paper based ones. As I've said, the the way of depositing your work in our PLA system is almost straightforward than that, and it doesn't require 
um, you know, the same time time frame. Um, it should be within three weeks, and in most cases, it may be less than that if for electric ones, provided they put it periodically and not let you you've got a pile of units and send them all at once. And it's going to take the assessor quite some time to go through that process with those documents and then supply them to the uh, IQA. He then has to go through the work to make sure it's all covered and he's happy with it or it's happy with the work, which will come to shortly. And uh, that creates backlogs. So, periodic assessment of work and internal verification of it. Um, be able to keep it well in three weeks. In fact, some of them could be returned if it's only a, a, a short document or a part of it, it can be covered in a few days. So, this after to has three strands sample assessment methods, monitor the assessment practice, and standardize the assessment judgment. And those three strands really go through uh, the whole of IQA. And it's all of Managing the documentation process to make sure that um, everything's covered. On the bottom, um, when new assistants join the team, I will propose standardisation meetings on a quarterly schedule. This was because, again, at this place, um, there were going to be a number of new assessors, and probably only two or three with any sort of experience. Um, so those quarterly schedules were adhered to. In your IQA plan, which this is, uh, um, strategy, uh, you can put that in. You don't necessarily have to keep to that, uh, provided you record why you haven't. Um, that's it. And again, this strategy is, uh, this should be on the, uh, on the end of any strategy, because no strategy lasts forever. Things change, people change, circumstances change. So this strategy is a working document and may be amended from time to time to comply with recommendations from the external verifier or college quality team. Numbered and amended copies must be put in force and previous versions destroyed. Now that is very important. As we've said, this is an auditable, or uh, these documents that we're talking about are auditable documents. Now, um, I'll give you a, a really good example. I was originally a mechanical engineer. When a new, a new job was being uh, built, they would supply droids, obviously, for the um, veterans and tradesmen to, to um, build the job with. Um, periodically, it may be that um, I mean, I, when I worked on the tools, uh, we would find an error on the drawing. Uh, in other words, it may be uh, we'd find that that you couldn't do that, or this pipe couldn't go through that plate, or, or whatever. Um, so that what would happen was a new drawing, or with a modification, would be um, put out. It was imperative that all copies of the original drawing were destroyed because if somebody picked up the wrong drawing and built it to the other standard again, it wouldn't meet, you know, it can be quite costly. In this case, the costs are not as great, but it's important that any documentation that is changed needs to be kept as the document and any previous documents destroyed. So that is a, an internal verification or IQA strategy. Yeah, it's how it looks. look. Um, your school or college should have one, um, because if not, the external or EQA might not be happy. Um, so yeah, that is an important document. Close up. I'm going to leave another couple of things now. Um, we didn't quite finish the um, QA presentation on there. I'll just finish the last few. Because the first what I've just been talking about, I'll cover the last few again. Uh, it was from MS. 
Okay, depending on the subject you're going to internally verify. In return policy, you will usually follow the internal policy current cycle, which we mentioned last time. It was the plan what you do it and do it, look at what you've done, and then you follow the internal again. Cycle will continue to ensure that the assessment process is constantly monitored and improved where necessary. Records of all activities must be maintained throughout to satisfy your organisation, the regulating authorities and, more than anything, the warning bodies. Identify the um, and monitoring is identified product, service, or whatever, ascertaining so what is going to be assessed and why. For example, our loan is working towards a qualification. Our staff being observed performing the job roles. The criteria will need to be clear, i.e., units from a qualification, learning objectives or aspects of a job specification. Learners should be allocated to assessors in a fair way. For example, according to location, experience, or workload. That's an important fact. Um, If you overload an assessor, um, it can create real problems. Um, most people take on work when they're asked to without giving it too much thought. For NVQ assessors, uh, which I was mainly involved with, the optimum number, really the maximum number, is 40. That's 40 students. So it's a lot, and if the assessor is actually travelling out to companies to assess those people in the workplace, um, the travelling time from place to place, of course, as well, as well as keeping all the records and documentation. So, yeah, 40 could even be way too hard for some qualifications. It depends on the qualification and the circumstances, yeah. So the, the Learners should be allocated to assessors in a fair way. Technically, it's um, in colleges and schools, it's section managers that actually do that. But this is where the change from internal verifier to IQA comes in. The IQA is much more involved with the management of the process right away. And um, managers might not be in as the position of the IQA to determine um, assessor workloads and what they've got to do. Um, so it should be probably a discussion between those as to set up and allocate the number of registered students to the assessors. Oh, key concepts of IQA are accountability, assessment strategies, risk factors, evaluation, interim summit and summative sampling, and that should be not hard, transparency, and having a rationale. The rationale and strategy pretty much the same thing. But the last bit is being accountable to your organisation and any external bodies. And that is, again, another important point. Um, obviously, to your but you are the link between 
your organisation and those external bodies. Uh, it's important that the relationship is good. Um, there can be difficulties arise with um, external quality assurers without too much trouble. So it's it, it's important that um, the external quality assurer is kept happy and informed by um, the IQA of what's happening within the organisation. The slides you've just seen are the basis on which to build your responses to the various questions posed in each element of the unit. Your answers may differ slightly across the practice and policies within your school or college in which you work. IQA has a central role in the way the organisation operates. It is important to remember then that the, the importance of maintaining records both hard copy and electronic. You're also the main link between your college and the awarding bodies, which I've just said. Your relationship with them becomes more important if your organisation is small. That body or bodies will be a solid source of support for your role. EQAs can answer you any questions you have and help to advise you on questions within your own school or college with regard to the delivery and assessment of the qualification. That is important to remember that they are a constant supply of support. That's what they're there for. It's not in their in the interests not to do that. You are delivering their qualifications. So, track to evidence for your portfolio. Your evidence, first of all, is made up of examples of the documents you use within your school or college. These will be explained by your narrative of their purpose and how they are used, further supported by copies of your school's policy procedures where relevant. Now, I put that in at the end because it, it, it actually matches the last bit of what I'm going to do uh, Now this unit is going to use quite a few of the documents from but the first one was understanding all the principles of how I will this is putting it into practice. So it's asking you to do a number of things. Learning objective one is be able to plan the quality assurance or assessment. So it's plan monitoring activities. This is your um, assessment plan uh, when when students are going to be assessed. Yeah. So plan monitoring activities according to the requirements of your own role. In academic assessment and internal verification. The um, emphasis now is on formative assessment. You'll notice at the top of here it will say achieved or not achieved, not yet achieved. Uh, now that is by you can produce a script of work that you're going to send in, you send it in, it gets assessed, it goes back again. Right? That will happen several times before the IQA says, ah, oh, can I have a look at some of those now? There's a number of documents together. Some you've passed, some are still not yet achieved. And I'll do those and say, yeah, okay, that's fine. Or I may find something that I'm not happy with um, and I'll discuss that with the assessor via a report. 
It may be, as I've said before, that I've made a mistake and made something and the acceptor will come back and say, no, of course not. There. And I'll go, oh, so you have. And, and then I'll close that out. So it must be, if you make a comment as I do it, or want to see something or something you're not happy with, once it's been explained and it's satisfied, then you need to close that out and say that that is now sorted. Make arrangements for internal monitoring uh, activities and assure, to assure quality. So again, copies of any sampling plans, uh, copies of internal monitoring and correspondence will make sure that those are covered there. Yeah? If you're going to if you're going to um, do a, a, an IQA on some work, then the assessors need to know about it so that they can make sure that work's available. And on a sampling plan, it's like, um, I think yesterday, Raman issued some sample documents to you, um, just in case your school doesn't have one. It should. There's not, none of the documents that, that have been sent out to you should be from your centre files in the in the schools or colleges that you work. There are loads of samples that, that have been sent out. If you haven't got one, by all means use that sample or modify it uh, to, to meet your needs. If you've got, obviously, your own documents, in your own organisation that you use on a daily basis to documents. Yeah. So copies of something plans, copies of internal monitoring correspondence. This is letting people know when it's going to occur. Carry out internal monitoring activities and quality assurance. Copies of the monitoring documentation. Yeah, that's really all that's done with this quality. The next one uh, is a little more difficult, or could be, I can understand it being a little more difficult. That's evaluate assessor expertise and competence in relation to the requirements of the role. <coughs> one of the things that I can suggest is that you have, um, I put in here, Copies of assessor feedback with rationale. In other words, where you've actually advised an assessor on something or, 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 or said that you need to do this or you need to do that. One of the reports, copies of the report will do. But also, um, some people don't realise this now, but each assessor should have a training needs analysis done. I will put a document showing that and how that operates. Um, once I finish this lesson, and it will go on to the Moodle platform for you to look at. And basically, what it does it takes each assessor, looks at their experience, their knowledge, and everything that goes with it, and says, do they need further training? If the answer is no, that's fine. Yeah, but it's recorded that at this point they, they can cover that, 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 and that, and at this stage, there's no further training required. It will also highlight areas where assessors do need some further training or additional support uh, to carry out their role. So, evaluate copies of tra assessor training needs analysis, experience, inexperience, etc. Evaluate the planning and preparation of assessment processes. Now, this could be just copies of the assessor feedback with reasons. Now, what it's asking for there is um, well, were the assessments planned properly? Uh, did they come in on a regular occasion or a regular basis? Uh, were they assessed as per the um, assessment agreement? Those are the things you need to look at on there. Two point four. Determine whether assessment methods are stage, that's a fully word, fair, valid, and reliable. 
So again, this is looking at assessment methods. Um, and it says, like copies of the accurate decisions and the reports, if the assessment process is being carried out properly, fair, valid, and reliable, then that will say so in the IQA decisions and reports. If an assessor is continually getting feedback from the IQA to say, I don't agree with your decision on this, or you need to look at that, or you need to look at the other, then obviously there's an alarm bell ringing that you should be looking at. And these can be covered, of course, in the standardisation meetings. And that was looking at fairness, if you remember what I said, right across the board. So that you've got a fair and reliable assessment process. 2.5 determine whether the assessment decisions are made using specific criteria. Again, this is a copy of your IQA feedback. Again, it, it will say on the IQA board um, were these assessed by using the uh, criteria only. Well, I know that sounds stupid because you've got a set of criteria that you either are achieving them or you're not achieving them. Um, but sometimes when it says specific, um, this can depend especially on um, uh, this type of qualification uh, where you've got a lot of academic work. Um, it was the command verbs, that's the word we're looking for, the command verbs specific. And if it's not followed those command verbs, then obviously it's not meeting the specific criteria. And that will be in the feedback to the assessor yeah, on that process. It may be that the assessor has that up and dealt with it. Uh, the IQA can then support that and say, yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's not been done or it's not meeting the, the standard. And then compare the decisions to ensure they are consistent. And this is again uh, it's dialogue, comparing assessor decisions and suggested evidence. This is what I'm doing here. Okay. Right, we will need to go into uh, the second lesson on this, so that will be on Friday. Um, what I will do again is this will be recorded uh, and it will be available for you on the Moodle platform. With that, I will close the meeting and thank anybody for it.